all right guys um today we're going to be looking at some cam and crank sensors signals on the mix sig um so what i what i have going on here is i'm in a 05 350z i can get to the cam sensors both banks fairly easy actually they're in the back of the engine but i can access them um and this is the rev up motor so there is two cam sensors per bank and um which oddly enough on all data for this vehicle it only mentions total two cam sensors and the crank sensors so regardless the crank sensor i have to put the car raise it up to get under there i don't feel like doing that it's laid out just got home so it's already been a long day i just want to knock this out so i'm going to do it at the computer the computer is down on the see i'm sitting in the driver's seat it's on the passenger seat floorboard and we're going to use all data here for our information and let's see i'll zoom into that one all right um save you all the trouble i already looked at the layout we want pins 13, 14, and 33. So, 13, 14, and 33. Terminal 13 is the crankshaft position sensor. It does actually give you a small little waveform, time base, and what it's set at. So, 13 is the crankshaft. It's a white wire with a blue the blue stripe and terminal 14 is camshaft on bank one red wire with a blue stripe and we'll scroll down to 33 is camshaft position sensor on bank one and it's a red wire so there you have it that's where we're gonna go which I already did Let's see if I can show you all underneath here go down here try and do this from the driver's seat so bear with me so you can see I'm back probed carefully back probed so, probed, so neither probe is touching the other there you have it just using some flexible probes and some pico leads for the yellow trace the yellow wire is going to be trace one on the scope and that is going to be the camshaft position sensor on bank one the blue wire blue trace is cam shifter camshaft position sensor bank two and the green wire you guessed it green trace is going to be the crankshaft position sensor Oh, and um, hanging here on the dash is my bob. It's my breakout box. And it's the OBD2 line spy from AES Wave. Um, I'm, I'm piggybacked all three terminals. Um, the cam, both cams and the crank are all piggybacked right here. And I have them right here in the chassis ground. But you can see we've got a good ground we've got good power all right let's start it up key on engine off and here we go audio in oh there's key on engine off bluetooth is connected and there we have it audio idling in. bluetooth is connected what am i missing uh-oh number two channel one as you can see voltage BNC 1000 one to one attenuation I do have a low pass filter on on each of them just to kind of clean it up a little bit DC normal and I'm set to 5 volts per division channel one 
channel 2 should be identical BNC 1 low pass DC normal and channel 4 same thing BNC 1 low pass DC normal all right so what I gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna collect a bunch of data like I said right now I'm at two seconds per division let that scroll across the screen Let's see if I turn this light off if it's any better I'll leave it on a little bit the bubble in on my screen that's just my screen protector just want to get a good amount of buffer here because with the mix it we can zoom in once we have it we can pause it and then we can zoom in and look at it you're looking for consistency on your waveforms you want everything to just look consistent no dropouts no spikes nothing unusual so we got a good amount go ahead and pause it up here so now we got to pause we can actually turn the vehicle off oh, that didn't sound good my um something in my exhaust is loose Audio underneath in. Bluetooth is connected. Yeah. We'll zoom in. And we want to, at first, we want to zoom in just enough to get a pattern. All right. You want to get a good pattern and you want to see what's going on here. Like we can see we've got one big space, one shorter space, two, two. One big space, one shorter space, two, two. You see how it keeps repeating? And then same thing down here. Looks like the same exact pattern. That's cam on bank one. Bank one is yellow trace. Bank two cam sense sensor is the blue trace. And the crank sensor is the green one. Channel four. So bank one and bank two looks like the same pattern. Only it looks like, um, let's see. You're trying to line them up. Maybe the blue is more retarded than the yellow. The yellow looks like it might be more advanced than the blue. I guess it depends how you're looking at it. Anyway, and then down here for the crank sensor, crankshaft position sensor, it's basically just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spikes repeated over and over and over. All right, so there's a couple resources if y'all aren't familiar with. Um, Pico, they sell oscilloscopes, but they also have, you can go to automotive and go to library and you can go into sensors and you can go into cam or crank sensors and it'll give you different information about it. Um, what it's doing, why it's doing it. So I'm not going to go into all of that. So on the ATO, you can actually go to the little car button for the presets and you can either go to sensors and you can go to camshaft or crankshaft and you click on either of those and it'll bring up, you know, the should bring up the right time base and voltage settings you can go to combination tests and then you have the option crank and cam sensor primary ignition plus injector voltage cam and the primary ignition cam crank injector voltage and secondary i'm not using either of these um mainly because i'm plugged into two cam sensors and one crank sensor and I don't have an option for that um, now when you click on these like if you go to camshaft you'll see here it asks you Hall effect inductive AC excited you can go to crankshaft same thing inductive sensor inductive running or Hall effect well how do you know 
One thing you can do is you can go places like All Data. If you're a shop, you're pro you're familiar with it. Probably paying by the month for unlimited cars. If you're a regular person, you can pay for just one vehicle at a time for so many months or a year or five years. And um, and it'll tell you, like here for this 05 350Z, gives me all the information right here. And right here it tells me it's a Hall Effect. On this car, both are all four, I, I believe all four cam sensors are Hall Effects and the crankshaft is Hall Effect on this vehicle. All of them are. Um, but one thing to keep in note, to keep in mind, when you're looking at your waveform, um, or at your sensors for one, often the Hall Effect sensor will have three wires and the Reluctant sensor will have two wires. Um, you can look at your, your um, signal that you're getting. A Reluctant sensor will have an analog signal and the Hall Effect will have a digital signal square wave. So you see here we're getting a, a digital square wave signal with pulses that that tells me this is a Hall effect as well as I know because I looked at all data it's a Hall effect all data will tell me what it looks like and down here if you notice it also gives me something to compare to a known good this is where Pico shines and I wish I hate to say it big sig I wish you guys had this Pico has a waveform library so if you own one of their scopes you can put in you can look for the year make and model of the vehicle you're working on and look for a known good to compare yours to because just because you get a signal how are you going to know if you're looking for cor correlation and timing each of these signals, both cams and crank signals, they all need to line up a certain way in a certain order. Well, how do you know if that's the right order or not? Well, you look for, you get a known good and you compare the two. Um, this one, if you look, here on bank one and bank two, bank two, one of the single ones, big gap, lines up, look, one, two, two, one big gap one those two line up that's just what it's doing right here one two two one one big gap one and they're lining up right there and then right where they line up you can see where it lines with the opening on the crank sensor and same thing right here lining up right here bank one bank two and right in with that gap there for the crank sensor. Now, if you didn't have a known good, you could probably Google it. There's a few sites online. This isn't a video about that. Um, I'm sure you can Google and find places to look it up. Um, but you can also look for just obvious things like you want a good steady signal you want it all looking even all the way across. You don't want to see a pattern and then a dropout. Like say the yellow dropped down. That's probably a problem. Or if it's spiked up and it's repetitive. Like there's a spike that looks unusual. And then a little bit another spike or a dropout. A little bit of time and a dropout. That could tell you you have a problem. Um, so you can also see where you're measuring. Like we can pull up our measurements, Y1 and Y2, we'll put Y1 right at the bottom here, right at ground. Put it right at ground, and then Y2, let's see, it's going right to 12 volts. So we zoom in to get a little more in depth. You can see 
right at 12 volts so it's a 0 to 12 volt waveform and since we are on 5 volts per division see can you see that 5 volts per division on each channel they look about the same so my guess is is they're all going to be right at 12 volts 12 volts and we'll go up to channel 1 12 volts a little off right there but you can see so right at right at 12 volts I know this car is good works good runs good um, Mixig, I wish other Mixig owners, I wish we can save, um, share these. You can save them for yourself. I believe, I believe to save each trace here, we have to go through each channel. Like right now we're on channel one. So we'll hit quick save. Uh, quick save. And I believe that's saving channel one's trace. And then we'll go channel two. Quick save. And then channel 4. Same thing. Quick save. Now I believe that just saved each of them. You can also do a screenshot. Right here with the picture. You could also do a video recording when the vehicle's running if you want. Or a video recording of what's on the screen here. On the automotive scope, you can bring up your bottom menu. Let's see, we'll get rid of that measurement. And we'll bring here where it says 360, our ruler. We'll bring that up. And then it asks us number of cylinders. You can put in 1 to 12 cylinders. This is a 6 cylinder, 05350Z, 3.5 liter. And you can see for angle of degrees, 360, we're going to change that to 720. Show you why. Okay. So I'm getting it right on this line here of this cam sensor. And it's 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. And then it starts over right there. So we'll take that and put it on the same spot on that one if it's a little bit off right here it's okay I'm, I'm not like working on this vehicle I'm just showing you guys so oh shit um this isn't on breaking down the signals guys I, I don't want to get too into this I just want to show y'all you know what you can do with the mix sig that you can get good cam and crank signals you can measure them, you can take video of them, you can save your reference waveforms. Um, just give you an example. Over here is your reference waveforms. Let's see, we'll go to the latest one. And you can see two, three, so that's them right there. The last three I did, we got the crank, cam two, bank two, and cam bank one. So we have those saved. So, so I have them saved on in mine in my scope, and then I'll save I, I'll save all my reference waveforms to a thumb drive. I save all these to a thumb drive, label them on the thumb drive. And that way I have known goods of vehicles that I looked at, my vehicles, family, friends, what have you. I wish we can share these among each other. I mean, we can pull them out, put them on a thumb drive, send them to somebody, but you can't open it up, see them on your computer. You can see all the recordings, pictures, everything from here onto your computer, but for some reason you cannot see the reference waveforms on your computer. Um... 
So I don't know. I just I wish we had a waveform library of our own for Mixig. Maybe that's something Mixig um, can think about for their automotive scope. Um, anyway, I'm gonna give me a second and I'll set up the ignition paddle paddle probe. Also, I do want to show real quick that this is dual overhead cam. So there are two cam sensors to each bank here. You can see them right there. Uh, look. A gray one right there. It's a camshaft position sensor. And that green one, where are you? That green one right there. That's a camshaft position sensor. And that one down there is a camshaft. And that's just this bank. On the other bank, you can see the green one over there. There's a green one all around over there. You can see the green one. The other one's over there as well. All right, on this engine, see cylinder there. That's going to be one. Down here middle is going to be three and then five so it's one three five and I'll just I'll start up here I'll start on one and I'll let you see here where it's at about that all right so let's turn it on channel three turn on already secondary the pico i think is about 5000 attenuation regardless it doesn't need to be a perfect waveform we just want to see where it's at all right so if you see right there between 240 and 360 that's where my number 1 cylinder is at right there right then So I'm going to pause that. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out first. And give it two seconds per division. I like to do this. I like to zoom out, get a good buffer built up. Then I pause it. Then I can go in and look at it. I can... I can zoom and go all throughout it. I like to get a lot on the screen first. So we just made the whole screen. That's two seconds per division. There's 14 divisions. That's 28 seconds going across. Plus the amount of time I've been talking. Just let it build up a little. Let me turn my recording on. I'm recording there. Sorry about having to go in like this. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to pause it. Sorry, I couldn't show you all that. There, now I got to pause. Now. All right, so now I got a lot on the screen. I could turn the vehicle off. Got it paused. Turn the vehicle off. And now I can zoom in and out. There's 720 degrees. <coughs> you said my cylinder sink right there. Oh, I can't remember which cylinder I was on right then. Huh. Anyway, I'm going to turn off. get a little cleaner view at it. Let's 
So I'd say guys, pretty easy. Usually if you're diagnosing a vehicle, you just, you want to look for something just obvious that's off here. If you're, you know, maybe you're having a problem with the cam sensor or the crank sensor, you might see a spike on either the cam or the crank or drop off, you know, intermittently every so often. Um, you may want to look at this if you're looking at intermittent problems while it's running, see if there's a drop off on either one of the cams or the crank sensor when the problem occurs. Um, oh, there's loads of information about this. This video isn't breaking down the cam and crank correlation. Um, I just wanted to show it on the mix sig. One of my subscribers, one of our friends here at Adam's Workshop requested it. And I think his name is Karu Chavez, Karu Chavez. Anyway, thanks for being part of the channel thanks for requesting something i was wanting to do another video with the mix sig um i just wasn't sure what i wanted to do so this was a fun video um like i said if you can't if it's difficult to get to your camera crank sensors look to see where the engine computer is in this case i showed you at the beginning it lives down there in the passenger's foot area on the right and we were able to back probe them no problem Oh, um, you can zoom, you can zoom if you want, go down here, these are your options on the bottom menu, move, I'll move that out of the way, we can hit zoom, as you notice on the top now, we can zoom across, look at all that, we have all that to look at. Remember, we had set it to two seconds to roll. And so look at all that time we have to look at. See, that, that'd that be great if we are looking for an intermittent fault. Maybe it'd pop up in there. Maybe not. Intermittents can be hard to find. Anyway, guys, I'm just, I'm going on now. Um, I think I'm going to shut this out. Somebody's blowing up my phone. I'm hungry. I have no idea what time it is. No, it's been dark for quite some time. And I want to go in and eat, shower, and hang out with my wife. Alright, so I'm going to end this one, guys. Thanks for stopping by. It's Adam's Workshop, signing off. Okay, you can do measurements like this also. do measurements like this also so you want to measure the gap here in the crankshaft position sensor X that's X1 this one is X2 X1 and X2 and then you see up here X1, X2, and then the difference, 6.8 milliseconds is the difference. See if it's the same in each gap. It is. And we'll go to channel 2 measure the gap between here this big gap all the way to there 18 point or 54.6 milliseconds so it's x1 minus x2 we can take it slide over there to there is the same 54.6 measure the gap between there 24.6 
and do channel one as well. Fourteen point eight milliseconds. Those are also 14.8, look, from there to there, and from there to there, interesting, huh? And from there to there, a bit, yep. I don't know, this stuff interests me, I just like playing around with it, trying to picture what the wheel looks like, the pulse wheel looks like, just what the sensor's doing. I'm not going to go into that right now. Anyway, we'll thanks for stopping by, you guys. We'll see you all later.